The following is a presentation of the Eagles Sports Network. Welcome to the Eagles Sports Network. I'm Danny Rezork, sitting here with cross-country head coach Mike Spooner. Coach, second year, finally wrapping up here. Uh, a year where we have three all-conference runners, uh, two all-region. You know, we had strong performances at uh, the SAC Championship, the regionals, and, and many others. Uh, what really stood out to you this year? What's it mean to you? Uh, I think uh, the big thing that stood out for me was the, the, the next step forward into what we are hoping to be uh, normal results or, you know, um, at least the bottom of what can be as we continue to grow forward. Um, you know, we took a big step forward for both guys and girls um, this year um, compared to last year. And so I think the big step, uh, the big thing for me was uh, not only just the fact that we took a big step forward, but also the fact uh, that we bring everybody back, you know, for the most part in terms of the scoring purposes. Um, and, you know, we're only going to continue going forward. Yes, sir. So we had a lot of newcomers coming in this year. Uh, Brent Borden, who's a transfer, he mm -hmm. finished as our top runner in five out of six races. Mm -hmm. Freshman Colton Lee, he was the only other uh, racer to finish as top runner. Uh, we had Grace Lathrop, she only ran three races, but she, you know, some very strong performances from her. And then, you know, a bunch of other freshmen, Maggie Hope, Ashley Toole, Andrew Thompson, just to name a few, mm -hmm. had strong contributions. Mm -hmm. What did you see from the newcomers this year? Well, I, I think it was the, you know, the, the new wave and, and standard of what we're hoping to build for future years. And you combine that with the athletes that are on the team this year that were from our fir you know, my first year um, to be able to kind of show them and, and teach them kind of the program and how we're going to do things. I think it uh, reflects on, you know, why that combination uh, was successful for us um, this year. And so... Um, we you know we're a young team and uh, you know there's obviously you know can be pros and cons to that uh, with any situation but um, I certainly think um, that the combination of experience um, in the program combined with the new wave of athletes that came in this year um, I think was um, was why we were able to see a step forward. Gotcha, Coach. So we started the year out at the Fleet Feet uh, Invitational. You know, it's a strong performance where Grace Lathrop, Brett Borden, they, they made their debuts and they had very strong debuts. You know, the, the men finished seventh, the women finished fifth. What did you see from that first meet? Uh, in, in reflecting on it, I, I think the meet shows, um, you know, certainly the potential uh, that Grace has. I know her mid-season, uh, you know, injury kind of a... a kind of a fluky freak injury um, that occurred. I think shows her contributions uh, to the team uh, reflective, you know, through uh, a lot of the training she did with Inca and Smock and how they ended their season. Um, you know, I, I think it show. I think for the men's side, it was the big wake up call. We had a good summer's worth of training, you know, in terms of the base, but did not perform that day. And I think that was a little bit of that wake up call uh, for them, you know, on the women's side, um, I think it was a little bit of a wake-up call for some of uh, them in a different sense, um, just that, you know, the potential of, hey, we do have a great team, and obviously this was before um, certain injuries derailed um, the girls' side a little bit, but I think certain, uh, I think the first meet was definitely more of a wake-up call meet, which it's supposed to be, um, but, but it, set, it certainly showed, I think, a wake-up call in terms of the potential of the season uh, than anything else. A month later, we head to Fairborn, Georgia, where this ASICS race, it really stood out to me. We, we both, both teams finished third. We had seven finish in the top 30. Broke some records. It's the men's highest finish in school history with a, a race with more than 10 runners. Women's the highest since 2003. What stood out to you at that event? Yeah, I mean, this was the meet that essentially kind of accumulated what we had discussed. You know, we had Tennessee Tech uh, prior, which was an okay me for us you know I think we were still getting into the routine of everyday school life and every you know and you know weekly workouts you know but the ASICS meet I think was the uh, accumulation for both men's and, and women's about what the season uh, can be uh, for us as we went into the postseason especially on the men's side mm -hmm. for sure and, and you know and that was a race um, you know where we uh, it was Colton's debut, and so even he was getting kind of used to things rust-wise. Um, you know, it was uh, PR races from um, Katie Smock and, and Inky Van Gogh. Um, so that was um, a 
good meet. I think overall as a team is a good feel good meet um, at the perfect time for us. Yeah, coach, uh, so I feel like the Huntsville race, the, the festival year showcase, I feel like that was the only race where we really left quite a bit of meat on the bone. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it's a race with 50 schools, over 450 runners. What did you see from that race? Who stood out to you, and, and what can we improve on? Yeah, that was a meet. Um, obviously, on the women's side, we had uh, one of our athletes uh, get sick, and then um, obviously that was the race where uh, you know Grace had her injury. Um, you know, we had a few other, um, you know, girls that were a little flat that day. Inca was able to PR, um, but as a, as a team, um, you know, it was a rough day uh, on the women's side, but it really allowed me to challenge them to say, hey, we got two weeks till conference. What do we need to do uh, to get ourselves back on track? And, uh, you know, and then on the men's side, um, you know, that was a, you know, we had to hold a, Ray out that race, and so it allowed me to count on uh, some of the other guys to step up. And so on the men's side, it allowed uh, Trent Loveless and Christian Henry to realize a different style of racing that I forced them into uh, without Ray being there. Um, and that actually paid great dividends for us going into the postseason. And so um, in a sense, uh, that race allowed us to figure out who we were going to be going in the po into the postseason, and uh, you know it allowed me a great chance to be able to, um, you know, because like you said, a little bit of meat on the bone. There wasn't the perfect day, but it was a great experience. I had a very large meet uh, with a lot of great teams, and uh, that's going to be the new norm. And so um, that allowed us kind of that meet of who do we want to be, you know, this the rest of this month, and uh, what kind of program do we want to be, and uh, uh, they certainly stepped up. As you were kind of hitting that there, Coach, set us up for a successful postseason, you know, in the SAC championship. Men finished fifth, won sixth, best mm -hmm. finish in, in the last few years. Mm -hmm. uh, Colton Lee gets all freshmen. Uh, Van Gogh, Katie Smock, they get all conference. Mm -hmm. What did you see at the SAC championship this year? Yeah, on the men's side, it was our best finish since 2009, uh, which, is, uh, which is great um, in terms of what the new norm is. And, mm -hmm terms of getting us on track and on the women's side a spot better than last year um, which is also a great credit uh, to that women's team that they took that Alabama meet and really learned um, you know I know uh, um, Ashley Tool wasn't feeling good uh, still fought through and stepped up um, I know Maggie Hope as well that day stepped up on them um, had a huge PR Alana Bradley had a huge huge um, day that day as well and that just showed um, those girls kind of coming together. Carl Yard was right with them too on that back end. And so um, on the girls' side, that, that core of four learned, you know, throughout the year and, and fighting and working together. And I think that's why even shorthanded, we still, um, you know, were able to improve upon last year. Um, and then on the men's side, you know, it was that first opportunity of, you know, their goal all year was to get regionally ranked. And, uh, you know, they hadn't been and you know, when I thought that, you know, we were kind of getting the short end of the stick from the ranking committee and, uh, you know, they were able to come out of conference and show, hey, we should be top 10 in the region and this is why. And they uh, went out and performed, uh, you know, very well. And uh, I think it also puts in perspective as we get ready for track is, hey, if I'm here in cross country, all these guys are going to see them again in track you know, what can be, what can my conference expectations be in track? And I think that was a big thing for the guys is realizing, hey, we actually are as good as Coach is saying. And so I'm excited to to see the guys that continue to evolve and, and grow that reputation for themselves. So you went from the uh, the SAC championship in Salisbury to the regionals in Charlotte. Mm -hmm. It was great regionals this year, one of the best uh, in, in program history. Uh, men finish eighth, women 12th. Uh, men's best finish since 2003, and then two women make all region for the first time since 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about the team's performance and, and talk about your expectations going into the match. Yeah, I mean, going into it, uh, certainly it was more, um, you know, about kind of, hey, where are we going to pick off and where are we going to lead forward um, going into next year? You know, certainly you want to go into good momentum and to track as well. You know, so on the men's side, um, you know, eighth was great, um, certainly for them. They accomplished their year-long goal, which was to be, you know, a top 10 uh, team, which, you know, I thought we, throughout the year, 
it seemed like we were always missing one piece because of something throughout the year. And I think we would have been regionally ranked sooner, um, but obviously the end is what matters most. And, um, you know, they were able to show the rankers, you know, where they wanted to be and where they felt they, they should have been. And so that's always good to be able to walk away with that kind of feeling, um, you know, with bringing back uh, the top six um, on that guy's team, um, you know, that uh, is exciting for me. Um, in that regard, in terms of uh, being able to do um, more with them and bringing in a great recruiting class uh, as well to feed on that continued growth um, was very, very exciting. The women's side, um, you know, 12th was a, um, wasn't, wasn't quite the goal I had for them. Um, I thought with, um, you know, one of our athletes being healthy, um, you know, she's still raced, even not feeling good. Um, you know, I think if she was healthy, would have been uh, top 10. Uh, but it, again, allowed a lot of athletes this year, especially of things, a lot of the girls really stepped up and came into a new role versus just staying where they were. They really exceeded. And so, you know, three of our young ladies had minute PRs. You know, uh, everybody, I think, on the women's side PR'd um, minus one. And then um, on the guys' side, we moved three of our guys into the top 10 all time for 10K mm -hmm. cross country times, you know, on the lady side, um, Inca and Smock were already there, but they moved their spots higher up. And um, Maggie was actually uh, just off by about 15 seconds or so off of the 10th spot. So, so very exciting there um, in terms of, you know, this year really uh, was accumulated by the, the mantra of school history this, school history that, and, and you know, and that was, very, it's very exciting when that's a big theme into the season. Yeah, Coach, so, you know, two years here, you're breaking all sorts of records in those two years. Uh, talk a little about the culture you're establishing and, and what you see going forward for this program. Yeah, the big thing for culture uh, for us really is, um, is to come out and work hard and, and do what needs to be done, you know, and this is not um, a program where we're only going to focus on one person and not everybody else, you know, everybody's going to be held accountable. And accountability is the big thing that I wanted to bring in is, you know, it's not going to be a situation where, you know, we got 11 kids and 10 of them work hard and one doesn't, you know, that's just not going to apply. And, uh, you know, and so we as student athletes, especially here at Carson Newman, you know, we have, you know, take a lot of pride in having a high standard of ourselves and if, you know, and competing at a strong level and giving it your best, you know, isn't part of that, at least in an athletic sense, that you don't have to do this, mm -hmm. you know, and so that's the thing, it's it's not easy being a student athlete, and, uh, you know, and I challenge them to embrace that and accept that, and mm -hmm. so, um, you know, we are a team that, you know, certainly supports one another, um, you know, my big thing is to give athletes the opportunity, you know, that if they felt they never had a coach, to come here and get one from me. You know, I'll coach anybody, and I don't care how fast and how slow they are, but if they stick to that, you know, that motto of if you're gonna work hard and, and do what I tell you and believe in me and understand how much I care about this, mm -hmm. then, you know, then we're gonna be just fine and yeah. you're gonna improve. And uh, and that's something I take a lot of pride in is I, I do, I put a lot of work in for these kids. They know how much work um, I put in and, and um, in return, they give that back to me. It's always a, a two-way street, you know. If you give me 100%, I'm giving you 100%, and, uh, you know, we got a great group that uh, follows that model. Coach, it was a year full of fun moments. What stood out to you? What were some of your favorite moments? I think just them growing together um, as a team. You know, on our women's side, we're certainly younger, and so there's a lot of growth both in our capabilities and personalities um, in terms of maturing um, to become, you know, older student athletes. Um, I think the growth there was the exciting part on the women's side is continuing to see that and see them push and be there for each other even in a season that on the girls' side had a lot of turns, uh, you know, in terms of performance, but, uh, or results I really should say, but, so that's the big part there. On the guys' side, uh, the exciting part was really for them to create a new dialogue about how I think they want to be viewed, um, whether it be from their, um, you know, their peers be a more contributor in track in terms of scoring points for the team, you know, in the region, things like that. You know, I think the guys' big thing was to be, um, you know, respected. You know, their hard work, you know, you want, you of course always want that respect in return. And, uh, you know, I think they wanted that from their fellow competitors. And uh, I think they 
certainly have earned that and uh, you know there's always more to earn and so I think the big thing with the guys is they now understand that they've entered into this new world and they love it and they want to keep pushing to stay in it and uh, you know that's um, really just the growth of both programs um, coming together and uh, the future forward I think are the big things for me. So looking forward to the next sec uh, September uh what are we what are we going to improve on and focus on heading into the next season? So we have uh, currently slated we have uh, six uh, recruits coming in, three on the men's side, three on the women's side. You know, so in, in both and all both sides, I think are going to be part of the equation in terms of our results. Um, you know, I think on the women's side, uh, with health um, and the new ones coming in, I think uh, our expectation is to try to go to nationals. Mm -hmm. Um, on the guy side, I think the expectation is to try to go to nationals, you know, and, uh, you know, and that's not, uh, you know, that's a big, that's a big goal, it's a tall order, um, but every year it's always to get better, um, you know, for me, I think that uh, when you fall into the trap of, you know, this or bust, I think that's dangerous, you know, so for me, uh, the big goal uh, for us going into September is just to continue getting better, um, continue to do it the right way, and um, to bring the people in. Uh, to the program that we think will support and model that as well, and um, you know we're we're fortunate and blessed to be part of a special place like Carson Newman that um, does promote the right type of people, and um, you know and making sure that um, you know we have here who's meant to be here, and uh, you know for me as a coach who will coach anybody who wants to work hard and do that, um, I'm glad that lines up with. What we have here um, at Carson Newman, and so I, I definitely think that uh, the big goals next year is just to simply get better. But I, I think now that uh, you know, a couple of years in the program, uh, we're looking at you know bigger goals every year, and that's always what you want. You always want to talk about national. You never want to go into a year saying I haven't had a shot. You know, I hope that every year uh, going forward, we are having that type of conversation. Mm -hmm. Coach, final interview, interview of the year. Do you have any final thoughts? No, just, uh, you know, I'm very proud of the kids. They represented Carson and uh, uh, great. You know, they were great Eagles, um, late Eagles, um, on and off the course, and uh, I think it was a, a great season. I'm very proud of them. He's Mike Spooner. I'm Daniel Zork here with the Eagles Sports Network.